Well, hello, scrappers. Welcome back to my channel. I guess it's time to do a little more viewer Q&A. And today we're going to do it from a kind of interesting location. We're at my uh, remote vacation cabin in Arizona on my 40 acres of property here where I, I hang out, chill, and do astrophotography. But even though I've gone for a month or so, I've been watching the questions and comments, and there's been a lot of them. So I thought since uh, I got a few minutes here, hey, I'm on vacation, I got lots of minutes. I thought I'd uh, answer a few of your questions and comments. It's a little bit windy today, so I hope you can hear me okay. I may shout a little bit just to, to be heard over it. Um, so I get the same questions over and over again, and in my first viewer q and I went over some of them, but I get a lot of the same questions over and over again. So we're going to go over some stuff I haven't talked about yet. Um, number one, why don't you melt the gold at the end of um, a gold recovery video? You know, like uh, I put one out not too long ago where I got, you know, a little over six grams of gold out of um, IC chips. And people are asking, why didn't you melt it? Why didn't you make a, a bead? Why didn't you make a bar? Well, I've said this before in the past in the videos. But I haven't, you know, specifically come out and said it in one of these Q&A videos. Um, I don't melt the gold at the end of each video. And I know people love to see the fire, you know, that they just love to see the, the spectacle of melting gold and pouring something or making a bead. Fire! 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 <laughs> but, um... I'm trying to be economical about this. So there's two reasons I do it. Don't do it. Number one, it takes a lot of energy to melt gold, and energy is expensive, okay? It takes takes gas, which is expensive, and um, I want to melt the gold once, which leads to the second reason why I don't melt it, because I want to refine it again, maybe two, three times before it uh, gets melted down. And it's much easier to redissolve gold powder than it is to redissolve buttons and bars of gold. Gold powder will dissolve an aqua regia in just a couple minutes flat. Super simple, super easy. You know, a bar or a bead's going to sit in there bubbling away for a long time before it finally disappears. So, you know, I leave it as a powder until I get it as pure as I can get it. And um, I let it accumulate until I have at least like a half an ounce, an ounce, something like that. Then I'll melt it down and make a bar. Okay? So I only melt it once. Uh, it doesn't take that much more energy to melt, you know, an ounce of gold than it does to melt a few grams of gold. And uh, it's more economical that way, and um, that's just the way I do things, okay? Okay, here's a big question I've been getting a lot of lately, and I'm not sure why so many people want to know this lately. It's, um, will I do toll refining for them? Basically, take their stuff that they've accumulated refine it, get the gold, silver, whatnot, and for them, for a percentage. Okay, that's what toll refining is if you've never heard of it. My normal answer to people is, I've got too many of my own projects going on to take on yours. But I had to wrap up everything to go on vacation. So I have no projects going on now. There's nothing waiting in the wings when I get back home. So toll refining, I might take on some toll refining. Uh, I think it'd be an interesting project. Uh, it might make an interesting video. You guys might be interested in watching it. Um, but you know, there's got to be—it's got to be enough to make it worth my while. I mean, guys got a couple of pounds of chips, or you know, uh, a half a pound of fingers, or something like that. No, it's just you know, it's too much work. Even at a ridiculously high percentage, I charge. It's just not worth the effort. So, you know, if you've got 40, 50 pounds of something, now that's sounding a little more interesting, you know, get in touch with me. Leave a comment in the video. Um, email me. Go to my blog. Find my email address. I don't put my email on YouTube because I get too much spam. But go to my blog. Find my email address. Email me. And, you know, we'll discuss it. We'll see what you've got. Send me some photos of your stockpile. And we'll see if we can come to some kind of arrangement, you know. Not sure I want to be a full-time toll refiner, but hey, who knows? Maybe a new, new career. Certainly, I wouldn't mind trying it once in a while. 
see how it goes. Um, and the toll refining kind of leads to another question I get a lot. Um, there's people out there who have been stockpiling stuff for years and years and years with the plans to process it in their old age after they retire. And then after they retire and they get old, they find out that they can't do it. And they've got all this stuff stockpiled now. So I get requests from people, hey, would you like to buy my stockpile off of me? And again, you know, I can only say maybe, you know, it's going to depend on what you got. Um, it's going to depend on what you, what you want for it, too. Because a lot of people are emotionally attached to this stuff. They've been accumulating it for, I don't know, decades, maybe. They think it's worth millions. <laughs> In reality, it's probably worth a tiny fraction of that. Um, but again, you know, if you've got if you if you've got something and you think I might be interested in buying it, you can ask. Send me some photos. Um, don't be crazy with the price, because I can't pay crazy money for this stuff. You know, it's it's not gold until after I put all the work into making it gold. All right, it's 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 IC chips, it's fingers, it's pins, it's it's whatever. You know, it's not gold yet. It's gold after I'm done with it. Then it's valuable. Okay. Um, let's see. My nitric acid production series for my waste products. That was, that was a very popular series. Thank you all for watching those videos. Um, good numbers on the watches. Lots of questions, lots of comments. Um, probably the biggest one I got was, is this really economical? You know, to make your own nitric acid. Also, is it really economical to make it from waste? You know, how much electricity did I use? That kind of thing. Well, I didn't, I didn't keep track of how much electricity I used. I'll be perfectly honest. Ran a hot plate on low for a month, maybe. So, probably a little bit more than my um, copper refining cell used. But that was nil. So, um, don't think I used much electricity. And that was really... About the only um, the only feedstock I had to put in that I didn't already own. So a little bit of electricity. So I didn't make a huge amount of nitric acid, but I didn't do a huge batch either. This was more of a proof of concept, um, does it really work thing. And um, it did work. So I may do it on a larger scale in the future. Um, so is it economical? I think it was economical because it didn't really cost me anything but a, but a little bit of electricity. Maybe I'll try to keep better track of the electricity in the future. Um, I kept really good track of the electricity on the copper refining cell because people were saying, oh, the electricity cost is going to kill you. And what was it? It was 26 cents or something we figured out. I forget. I'll have to go back and look at the video or, or the notes I made on it. But it was some ridiculously small amount of, of electricity cost. You know, to run the copper refining cell for about a month. So, yeah, I'm sure evaporating down all that waste salts didn't use up that much electricity either. So, um, not only was it economical, I, in my opinion, because it didn't cost me really anything, but it got rid of waste, which waste, waste is a pain in the butt to deal with, okay? And this got rid of some of my waste. You know, I don't have to deal with it now because I've converted it into something useful again. Um, if you're going to do, you know, gold refining or recovery and refining on any kind of scale, you're going to generate a lot of waste. And you're going to find a lot of your time and effort is just going into dealing with your waste. You know, some days I do nothing else but deal with my waste. You know, I don't want to pollute the planet. I don't want to seal it up in drums and leave it for the next generation you know we don't need another love canal or uh, hanford washington issue you know so don't want to pollute the land that the wife and i own so you know i deal with the waste i clean it all up i process it get rid of it in a responsible manner but uh, it takes a lot of effort and if i can you know either reduce the waste i produce or turn some of my waste into a useful byproduct I'm all for that because it, it makes my life a little bit easier when it comes to dealing with the waste. All right. So I think it was a economical and B it reduced the amount of waste I had to deal with. And also, um, you know, nitric acid can be pretty hard to buy in a lot of countries. You know, you're just not allowed to have nitric acid. 
not allowed to buy it anyway. Um, it's getting harder here in the U.S. too. I mean, eBay just recently banned sales of nitric acid. So, you know, if you've been buying it on eBay and you go back to buy some more, you might be in for a, a little bit of a shock. They banned a whole raft of stuff for no good reason that I can see. Probably one of their corporate lawyers just issued some CYA memo and they banned a bunch of stuff. I mean, most of the stuff they banned, you can go down to the garden center and still buy. You can buy it on Amazon. Basically, they just handed the business over to their competition. Par for the course for eBay. It's run by idiots, in my opinion. But, uh, well, we'll get into an eBay rant another time. But, uh, yeah, nitric acid can be hard to come by. So, you know, if I can make it from my own waste, why not? Okay, another one. This one came in just the other day. Um, are there going to be more Eco Goldex videos? Yes, there are going to be more Eco Goldex videos. Um, in the last series of videos, I had scaled up my Eco Goldex gold recovery process from basically prototyping it in beakers to using five gallon buckets. Okay, so I've scaled it up a lot. And at that scale, I worked through all of the gold plated stuff I had stockpiled. I, I did work through it all. Got all the gold from all that gold plating. So I've been stockpiling more gold plated stuff. And I've got a pretty big pile of it going. And maybe by, I don't know, midsummer, end of summer, early fall, I'll be ready to do another run through the Eco Gold X because it goes quick. You know, if you've got, you know, two and a half, three gallons of Eco Gold X, um, virgin Eco Gold X, ready to go, you can run a lot of gold-plated scrap through that. And it strips it off just like that, especially if it's hot, if you give it a lot of agitation, that gold plating's gone in a few seconds. So I'll run a basket through, and, you know, a few seconds later, or, or a minute later, all the gold's gone. Okay, reload the basket, put another load through, and, you know, pretty soon the whole stockpile's gone. You know, so it, it doesn't take long. So, yeah, there will be more Eco Gold X videos. It's just now that I've scaled up my process, I do it in batches. And the batches may be months apart. You know, it's not continuous because there, there's really no point in doing it continuously. So, yes, there will be more Eco Gold X videos. Watch for them. Uh, I don't know if I'll be, you know, covering the same ground I've covered before. But, you know, there may be some more Eco Gold X quick tips and, and, and whatnot as I work through the process. Okay, road videos. As you can see, I'm on the road. I'm over 2,000 miles away from home, although I consider this my second home. Um, so by the time you see this, some of my road videos should have dropped on, on YouTube. And um, so I don't know what kind of feedback I'm going to be getting on them. I don't know if there's the wrong audience to be, you know, showing them to or what. So give me lots of feedback on the road videos, please. Yeah, let me know. Oh, this is so boring. Oh, this is great. Um, can you can you expound on this a little more? Whatever. So let me know in the comments on the road videos as they come out what you think of them, um, what I could do better, what you'd like to see more of. I'm going to be on the road for another month. Uh, I've got to go up into Wyoming. Going to go to Nebraska. Um, Going to spend some time in Colorado. Some time in New Mexico. So, you know, there's a lot of road videos to come if people are interested. You know, if nobody's watching them and the comments are all, uh, you know, maybe I'll stop posting them. Maybe I'll stop taking them. But uh, anyway, let me know what you think of the road videos as they come out. And, uh, oh, and last but not least, keep firing the questions at me. You know, I don't, I don't have any trouble answering questions. You know, you see I'm doing it right now. Uh, yeah, fire the questions at me. Ask me anything, basically. Um, well, not anything, but you know, don't go, don't get, get too personal. But you know, ask me anything about my processes, what I'm doing, you know, and uh, I'll answer as best I can. So I got another video coming out too. Uh, it actually may be out by, before this one, um, where I have revamped the whole solar power system here at the cabin. So uh, that'll be on my second channel. So check out my second channel. If you're at all interested in solar power, alternative energy, whatnot, you know, I've got an off-grid thing going on out here. So I've 
I had a wind turbine for a long time. Now I've got lots of solar panels and they provide all the power I need. But I completely revamped the system. That video is coming out soon. It'll be on the second channel, Electric Geek 64. So check that out. Um, you may find it interesting if you're into alternative energy, renewable energy, whatever. And I guess that will cover it about all for now, at least all I could think of while I'm on vacation out here. There were probably some other burning questions that I've been asked that have slipped my mind, but I was making notes as I was reading comments and emails and questions, and um, I probably missed one or two, but hey, fire your questions off at me, and uh, they can appear in the next Q&A video. So until then, thanks for watching. Give the video a like, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe to see my future videos. Press that little bell icon. YouTube makes you press to be notified when new videos come out. Check out my second channel. So like and subscribe there, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.